welcome everyone to data life playbook leadership podcast today we have uh, with us eloy sasot uh, and eloy uh, is the head of analytics at news corp a worldwide network of leading companies in the world of diversified media news education and information services such as the wall street journal the dow jones new york post the times the sun the australian harper collins move storyful and unruly Prior to this, Eloy led pricing, um, data science and data analytics at HarperCollins, publisher, the second largest consumer book publisher uh, in the world. And um, Eloy holds an MBA from INSEAD uh, and a master's in mathematical engineering. Um, thanks for coming to the leadership um, podcast, Eloy. Thank you for having me here, Michal. So yeah, so- Can you so as a starter, let's uh, tell us about your journey through data analytics uh, over the years. Like Steve Jobs was saying, you only you connect the dots looking backwards, mm. uh, and um, and that's what I've been doing uh, in the in the recent years. So my career, when I look back, it's kind of two stages: one before the the masters in business, uh, and after. At the beginning, I was I was a coder. I was um, working in space engineering, doing mathematical models, and then after that, they took the more uh, business side of, of things, and, and it ended up connecting all together in the in the recent years. So you can imagine at the beginning in the space engineering, we were uh, working on satellite orbits, we were measuring space weather for uh, spacecraft missions, and we had much less data than we have now. And the, because the, the satellites um, didn't have many years of, of data with data points, uh, but we had a lot of fun. For example, we had one uh, one division head who, who was Irish, and each of the uh, so each of the nodes of the cluster that we had had the name of a beer. So we were throwing the <laughs> we were throwing the juice through uh, through Murphy, through Guinness, through Guinness, and, and that that was that was quite fun. And eventually, I after after a few years uh, there and publishing some papers uh, in, in in spacecraft orbits, um, I I felt the curiosity of understanding the business world more and having impact in in, in other in other industries, and that's why I got to that extra education in in business uh, to help me to help me make the bridge. I evolved then in a, in the field of uh, a bit of change transformation in wind energy, and then I went into uh, American Express, uh, driving pricing uh, pricing function there. And all of a sudden, I was contacted to to start a, a function of uh, pricing and analytics and data science in HarperCollins, a publisher, which was a totally um, a thought that would have never come come in my mind. Uh, and what I was started looking at is like, wait a minute, it kind of all the dots connect. You need this, and I had that, that a few years ago. You need that, and then I have that as well. You need that. Actually, connecting all the previous experiences makes you makes you a, a quite a specific profile that can 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 move around and be more adaptable. And so I said, okay, let's let's try it on. Uh, for <laughs> fuel with my my curiosity, and also the the nice people that were there. And things starting out going well. Um, I with with the, I recruited data scientists uh, with all this, this new term of data, of data science. We started adding value to the company. Things were growing, and eventually we managed uh, we led that globally for HarperCollins. And now I'm in uh, News Corp, helping uh, each of the dif different businesses that we have, uh, driving analytics and data science forward. Uh, either with collaboration across businesses or doing deep dive in some of the in some of the business, helping also creating teams. Interesting. And wow, uh, that's that's a quite quite vibrant sort of jump from uh, a space to uh, a book publishing house. So, what what triggered that decision? Like why? And I think that's that's fascinating story, by the way. And, and thank you so much for sharing that. But uh, why publishing house? Uh, the curiosity. And the always willing to to learn more. So, when you are entering a world that is so different from what you have seen before, uh, there are two things that happen. One, you can add a lot of value because you are different, and two, you can learn from this new world. So, um, and in particular, in 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 the world of HarperCollins and News Corp, the creatives and the, this company is about create um, about, about telling stories. Mm. And, and the world of media is about telling stories, being creative. And that's also 
has very strong parallels with what we do in data science and analytics is telling story, stories uh, with data. And, and while they're very they're parallel, they're having those at this, in the same company, um, there's a lot of opportunities for, for cross learning. Interesting, interesting. So um, I think I'm, I'm I'm definitely curious to know. So what would a typical day look like uh, in, in in your in, in your current role? Yeah, well, it's, there's not a typical day because <laughs> with the diversity of businesses and problems that we have, so that that that's a lot of fun. Even my commute. <laughs> Some days I can be just um, you know staying in the, across the corridor from the from the bedroom to the <laughs> to the living room where I have my little office, or across the city. I'm based in London, across the city, and where we have the the, the, the offices, or across the pond, across the Atlantic, because we have, <laughs> we have because we, need, we 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 also do quite a lot of travel. So that gives you an example of the diversity of of, of lives that, that that we can have. Then it's it's. Because of the topics that we do, there is there are different projects and they have different pace. Some of them can be uh, done in days, others in weeks, and others in months. And the follow-ups that you have are different. Hmm. The people that you deal with are very different as well. Because we need to, when we are leaders in in driving data driven initiatives uh, uh, across businesses, it's important to be able to understand the hard uh, part of the data and the technology to a good extent, while at the same time telling the story and uh, speaking the business language uh, for the leaders to, to understand what we're doing and to support what we're doing. Um, so then you have this, those different interactions that happen at the same time. Interesting. And I, I think, um, and, and to, to me, like you represent a very, very um, um, interesting demography. So uh, you have a fabulous background and, and definitely you are in a way, a, a non-tech industry doing tech stuff. So it, it's basically publishing house, a lot of content and sort of, um, and this is, this is the industry that is sort of most vulnerable on uh, views and, and all. So it, it sort of, it has some of the best minds working on the analytics problems today of, of today's times. So um, basically, what is your perspective on, such, on some of the challenges that that you see um, and dealing with sort of a company that is sort of non-tech in, in mindset, um, uh, sort of embracing this idea of new age of analytics or new age of technologies to, to sort of yeah. stay competitive. Yeah, I see that as a double-edged sword. There are challenges and opportunities. And the key is seeing is an opportunity. If we want to be and we are, and we believe we are innovative, um, you need to take that mindset of this is there's a lot of change and we can become better at that. Okay, that's the number one mindset that we have in the company. And then there is um, understanding that we need to change, but at the speed that the company can digest that change, and at the diversity that the company can digest that the different changes that happen. So, being a publisher, uh, for for example, that most uh, most of what we do tell tell stories in newspapers or, or through books. Uh, is, is an asset, is a very strong asset because we know how to tell stories, we know the creativity and we have, a, we have been doing that for hundreds of, 200 years in, 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 some, of, in some of the companies. Um, so we shouldn't lose our DNA, uh, while at the same time adding uh, that technology, uh, that uh, way of treating data, way of solving problems in new ways, okay, that makes us together stronger. It's kind of a half and um, Analogy is what I was telling you before, also with my career, with many people can, uh, can can have similar things. Like, is when you combine two things that are different, uh, the, the it creates a certain togetherness that can be very strong if managed properly. Then is how do you manage properly? So managing the speed, the speed, and knowing where to focus, knowing which problems you can need to handle and uh, which ones you do, you do not. Being big. Being a big, the big conglomerate that we that we that we are allows you to try things, to try many different things, uh, and fail fast. And you can fail fast, and you can double down on the ones that are um, that, that that work well. And needless to say, that is not easy. It's not easy because also even when you when you need to double down, steadying and moving a big ship um, takes uh, take, takes time. But then when it moves, the value that you generate with it is huge. Interesting. No, definitely, uh, uh, very, very, very valid point. So I think one of the thing that um, um, also I'm, I'm, I'm curious to learn. So um, say for a small business, 
like who is in who is in non tech non sort of it and and all and if suppose mm-hmm. they want to start this journey of being data driven so i think uh, there is some parallel to you with them so like obviously non it doing it like doing some uh, 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 data analytics stuff so how could sort of someone in embrace um, the idea of being analytics driven and sort of drive uh, it's 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 sort of because it's still it's 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 a difficult thing to understand it's majorly right now miss the play of all the kings and the lords so it's still not in the uh, although the tools are uh, the capabilities are still available for everyone to use but still the science and the know how and and we still see the uh, the scare of the unknowns uh, of sort of ut- utilizing this so how a small to medium business start this journey what's your, what's your take on that good good good, good question and now there's every, every, everyone pretty much is trying to, to figure out that um, my my view is start with the end what do you want to achieve start uh, with the key problems the core problems that you have in your business and then what data can do to help solve those problems better. After all, companies can be seen as a factory of decisions. So, and if those that don't gut feeling only, uh, if you combine that expertise that comes with the gut feeling with some extra data, you would normally you, you should be better off. Uh, so start with some core problems, then focus on those. And, and then from those, you move backwards. Okay, I want to solve this problem. What data do I need? From the data that you need, um, what technology do I need? What kind of people do I need? How big is this problem? Um, is it very big? Okay, then how do I manage me getting to the solution? Do I need to get it uh, in the short term, in, in, in a few weeks, few days, etc.? And and from there you can you can uh, plan the resourcing. Uh, but regardless of how big the problem is. Um, I have the strong belief that it's always good to start small. Hmm. Start small, demonstrate the value incredibly fast, make people that do not are, have data as their core competence understand uh, the, the simple concepts. It doesn't need, they don't need to understand everything or the frameworks, so just make them feel and show them some very simple graphs of how things work, um, and then they, you start bringing them with you. So in sum, start with the problem. Okay, what are you trying to solve there? Then work backwards with that, uh, um, creating the resources that you need to get there, starting small, explaining what you do, manages it in different speeds. So you have an end at, at in your mind that is a long, mid, long term, but you need to, it's what I call the, the highway. You know you, you're gonna, you're, you need to, you need to go a different, at, at a, your end is farther, uh, but you need to also have some some certain stops uh, to showcase the, the the story to get to the business. That's an interesting. That's a that's an uh, interesting example, by the way. And, and thank you so much for sharing that. So um, I think one of the thing that um, um, again relevant for small business. So how to create um, a culture of being data driven? Like what are what are your thoughts on sort of? So definitely this gives me some way uh, start start small, show your success. And, and scale on that and that beautiful thought and, and and very sort of ROI friendly as well now not not uh, talking about sort of um, creating the culture because this is this is one of the most painful thing that we have been hearing for most of the businesses is so it's not a just a so it's not a uh, sprint it's a marathon so you have to sort of uh, so how to how to drive that culture and sort of how to sort of work on so what is what is your take on that yeah, so for that we need to, when, when the culture, when you're not from the start having a data, a data DNA culture, you're not, you're not a company that just needs that from the beginning and you, you, you start when the company has already has, already has some development. Um, the people are not naturally going to come to the data. So you need to be in the data to the people. And how do you do that? You do that at different levels. First, um, how do you place your team? And how do you manage interactions of the, of the team that does the data science and analytics calculations? Don't put them in the basement. <laughs> Many people do. <laughs> Be careful with the basement strategy. So <laughs> put them in a, across all the floors, close to the people that make decisions. They are normal people. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. 
they, they probably maybe don't use PowerPoint even or don't use much Excel. They have this, you know, uh, these weird laptops with their weird screens with a lot of different signs that they only understand. Um, but they are people, and and they they also work for the business uh, to, to 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 drive success of the business together. So embed them, and people will see the differences, and also they start appreciating um, their differences as as, as well, and how combined we create more value. So that's one thing. Second thing, um, where the decisions are made, there are many decisions that are made in meetings, or at least they are discussed in meetings. So if you can bring the data to the meeting have some champions that can do that for and better if there's not the, the that data analytics and team. if it's someone that can champion that for you and you can coach them beforehand bring in some graphs and start discussing uh, something with graphs then pe as soon as people start engaging with the graph that you ha you're start winning you're winning you're making them um, leverage the, the value to, to the data um, and then there is the more white way of doing things about how you manage all the BI and reporting and analytics systems across the businesses. However, if you do that alone, it will not work as much um, as if you have the people embedded and also the decisions embedded as well. Okay. Of course, all these things can be done with, with fun. You can create competitions and nice graphs, etc. But you also you have limited resources, so you need to balance the time that you have to, to do that. Interesting. No, I think definitely uh, uh, very good advice, by the way. And thank you so much for sketching it out so uh, detailed and, and, and sort of uh, uh, in, in a very methodical way. Uh, I do appreciate that. So I think um, so one more um, interesting thought sort of that we hear a lot about is leadership not um, in tune with uh, the practitioners. So many times I think it's 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 also uh, communication is one of the primary reason for any project fail and and, de and definitely data science is not uh, away from that either. So uh, we hear a lot lot of uh, horror stories around how uh, it's difficult to convince leaders on any of these radical ideas because to begin with it's it's a cultural change and I think you scale it beautifully on 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 sort of how to build that culture and sort of how to sort of go. And, and, and sort of um, uh, execute these strategies. Now, uh, what are some of the some of the uh, uh, shortcuts or some of the things that a practitioner could do to bring the leadership on the same page that they should buy into these um, data-driven strategies and, 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 and so on and so forth? I would say three things on those. Uh, so it's the timing, understand when, is the, when the time is right to uh, making them um, feel uh, by themselves, and three, all the, the indirect touch points of influence that you have. So let me go through each of them. Um, and leaders, um, I've observed, and as, as um, more and every, every company pretty much, but more and more, they, they're very busy. And they, um, they're, I like the comparison that, uh, that they like a pendulum. So you need to understand, sometimes they go with, <laughs> way the other way, it's just like they go more strategic operations, you have different budget cycles that happen. So understand what is the right moment, the window opportunity that you have in which they are willing to consider uh, innovation, understand uh, how the business is working, understand your problems and can, how can you help them. Okay? So they, and they understand that well. Um, second, once you have that, when you go and present and uh, try to really go and present them to them um, and make them feel by themselves. There are psychological studies that showcase that unless people and the, and the, and the more senior you get them is the, the more we our brain ages and the more the brain needs to experience by itself in order to learn uh, in order to really um, have all the all the concepts well well integrated. So show them the graphs and make them ask questions and do it in a way um, that, well, this is, this is also, uh, as, as the example saying, work with me, do it in a way as well that you, you ask for their advice, okay? Uh, do not go, do not go very just like, you know, you know everything, how it works, because you don't know everything. <laughs> they are there because they have a lot of experience, okay? You know the data side probably better because that should be your expertise, uh, but then have a, have a discussion, right? Um, so that's the, the direct conversation, and then in some cases you may not be able to have the conversation. 
and then you need to coach other people that will sell that for you or that will put you in that situation. Um, and then so then you you try to go through them and then they're the ones that can be the link and that can tell you um, there because there are many people in the organization that are very good at selling. Uh, and actually they sell the, the sales people, for example, they, it's their job. So they will be able to explain a concept once they understand that. What will happen that is there's a trade-off, of course, because you you maybe you sometimes you're not in the room, but you kind of um, gain more uh, gain more visibility. So combining those things, you will have a conversation at the right time, and and then it's about keeping it, keep keep the pace, and make sure that you focus on on the problem that matters for the business, because the listening the listening part is critical. Uh, you may you or your team as a um, as data scientist, uh, analytics practitioner, uh, maybe very interested in building, I don't know, a recommendation system on, on something, but maybe we just need to do a classifier of these two or three things. And that's what the business needs. And that's why they need to focus now. And so I understand that very well. And and while you, of course, say, okay, it's a value with this recommendation system, for example, um, then at least, at least expose it once. Uh, but if the, if the business um, then we explain to you that it's it's better to do a classifier than go for the classifier. So listen, listen. No, I think they're definitely a very good point. Um, appreciating the leadership and taking them um, with you in this journey, I think definitely uh, again very well, very well stated sort of um, insights on that. Uh, and thank you so much for sharing that. And now um, let's talk about. Um, I think you mentioned that you were pulled in um, um, into say, one of your companies to put up a pricing strategy, like uh, price analytics or something, right? So uh, it's not around that, but I think what what definitely I want to know um, is so if if one is put into a situation where they have to design uh, an analytics practice within a company, what would be the first day and first five days and first thirty days and first hundred days look like? Uh, so how would you sort of you advise that if someone because there are, there are a lot of lot of us who are put into this situation of hey this is my golf buddy told me this is a uh, next trend now make sure we are covered um, so it's it's data science is, is very uh, in that very center of those, those discussions now in which leadership understands and they want to sort of build their practices and many practitioners they don't know like what is the day zero and day one and and day sort of thirty and day day hundred scenario. So what would you what would you advise um, uh, on that? I think that's a that's, that's a very critical thing to do, and I would I would stress it even further. I would think that the role starts before you join. The role mm. starts when you um, some in many cases when you can explain the businesses or as you evolve in the organization because they evolve in have different roles as well. Um, what is the role gonna be doing? And what is um, what is the what is the best way to, to be organized in the company? So what I would advise for for people if there are people that are that are looking or they're, or, or they're in, maybe inside the, the same organization, um, negotiate the role beforehand, and the, and and that's for the better of the person and the team that are gonna they're gonna deliver and for the organization, okay. so because this is. Um, it changed so much, and it depends in many different factors. It depends of what's the team, what's the problem that you want to solve, um, what is and what is the um, what are the qualities of the people, of which the stakeholders. Some of them understand, some of them do not understand much. The problem can be focused, or the problem can be uh, many, uh, many uh, different sets of problems. And uh, what is the data that you have at hand? Do you have it in control, full control? Do you need to? Um, have other work with other departments. Um, there are many, and, and and so on. There are many different um, items that you need to understand well to manage. What is the best uh, way of organizing? So, for example, in Harper Collins, we thought about that thoroughly when we were moving into a global structure. What is the best way to doing so? Uh, because what is the business? How is the business doing so? Are we, yes, in this way, there have different specificities by market. We want to have a global, uh, but a global solution. So that we need to have certain things that are centrally. Uh, what can we? But there are certain things that maybe we can do centrally because we are not equipped to do so. Um, how do we get there? So then it's like these kind of questions arise before. Okay. So once you are in there, <laughs> you have already done the, the job, or maybe you haven't question. had. In some situations, you just arrive and you just don't know, and you need to to do to, to these things there as well. 
it's about um, listening and ask, asking questions and listening to the business so that you can focus your energies on the biggest problems and on the quick wins first. It's uh, what, similar to what I was saying before. Focus uh, on creating a quick wins to excite the business because those are going to give you the, uh, the the legitimacy that you need to build up on that to get more resources, etc. And 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 keep keep the keep the ball keep the ball and start make the ball rolling for um, for driving change. Because after all, what we do with data analytics is driving change. And one thing that I I've seen from the beginning and I often see in the internet in front of like it's not about as much about data, but it's about people. The data hmm. we can do it. The teams can do it, they are trained to do it, but it's all about people. It's about driving change in people. And and as as, as data leaders, that has many different dimensions. It has the dimension of stakeholders, it has the dimensions of upwards, it has the dimensions of the team. Also there's a there's a scarcity of resources, so how do you uh, fuel a change? How do you make sure that you provide opportunities for them and drive them? Have all these different elements, and you start and going back to what they're saying. You start day zero, day five, these kind of things. There's a lot of things to do, right? So focus, focus on the key problems, on the key people first. Listen, and then after a, after a few weeks, I would say, build a plan of growth. So deliver and build a plan, a plan of growth. Mm -hmm. No, I think definitely. Uh, again. Uh, very methodical uh, and, and, and makes makes perfect sense. So, um, magical team. So, I think that's another thing that I, I, I want to briefly discuss with you. So, to you, uh, what would... Um, so, so, I think many... We have, we have, hear, we have heard this a lot that um, it's not about data scientists, it's about data science. So, um, that pretty much primarily means um, creating this council of uh, right team. Uh, and and getting them involved. I think you briefly touched about uh, getting champions um, and making someone champion to or to represent uh, their subject matter expertise and sort of representing them um, in, in 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 those forums. Mm -hmm. I think beautifully said. So um, how would you? Uh, so what would your magic team looks like? So if suppose you are put in the situation of hey this new thingy, uh, you need to put up. Uh, who would you hire and why would you hire? Like your first two or three hires, if I if I can just extrapolate that. And 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 by the way, sorry for being very random on this, but yeah. uh, but I think it's it, it, it's good to see your insights on sort of how you. Misha, so, sorry to hiring. reply like this, but how long is a piece of string? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, so uh, what's the problem you want to solve? Um, so uh, but yeah, what you're saying is like what is really common in everything. So you need to get the data. Ready. You need someone that that can really make the data ready for you. You need someone that can strategize the insights, and then you know someone that can explain and integrate those insights into the decisions. Okay. So those are the three the three key roles I would say. Um, if you are one man stand, you need to do everything. One man. <laughs> and if you are one hundred people, then you have a lot of people doing a <laughs> different things. Start you know going into the different things. But those I would say the the three uh, tricky things. So get the data ready, drive the insights, and, um, and make those ins insights applied uh, to the business. And those may not be in that order. They may be, you may be going around in the, in, the, in the order that you do it because they depend on each other. Interesting. No, I think definitely. Uh, uh, well said. And I think one more thing that I, I hear a lot about, at least um, with a demography like you, uh, who, who pretty much working on a company that embraces these capabilities rather than producing one, so um, how would you go about picking a solution? So basically, if, if suppose, because uh, I, I have heard that a lot of uh, uh, businesses who consume these capabilities to make uh, competitive decisions, mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the decision factors in deciding a tool? So which tool to go for? So how do you, how, do you have any kind of uh, methodologies or any kind of insights into how you evaluate a tool uh, that, okay. that you could use? Yes. Um, we believe... Um, that well, sorry again. It depends, but it's it's <laughs> different factors. The speed, how fast do you need to solve your problem, and the size of it. Okay, uh, if you have a problem very big, then you need to solve it very fast. 
you don't have time to do it internally. Okay. Um, do you, if you need approval, but you need a proof of concept, um, or you need to as well. You, you need to keep the IP, and it's something that you want to keep core in your business, and you don't want others to do it. You need to do it inside. So, for example, uh, at uh, Harvard Collins, uh, we saw pricing as a source of competitive advantage. So we wouldn't like to do it externally because then it could be reproduced in, our, in others. We thought that we could do it better inside, in, inside because we combine the knowledge of the of the business uh, problem, of the subject matter expertise, and we have the and data collection and, 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 data, and data data modeling. So that's what we'll do in, in, inside. So, so those are some of some of the some of the some of the elements. Then you depend also on the people, the people that you have. Some people may be experts at a certain tool or may be biased in certain tech stacks. Um, so if you build teams at their own certain tech stacks, uh, of course they become more biased than that. We should be careful on that uh, as well because uh, it evolves. Uh, technology evolves very fast, and and if you should be kind of like more and more uh, tool agnostic. It's more about knowing that you need a visualization tool, you need a, a certain uh, coding tool for uh, for testing, certain maybe coding tool for, for production, you're very different. So it needs to be flexible. But then again, I have the, I, we have the review, it's like if you, if you are part of a bigger business, okay, and you, you can have strong economies of scale by having similar tech stacks across different businesses. You may want to give priority to that uh, for the benefit of the overall businesses, and you can create a common a common platform. So it's that's why there is a lot of um, different different um, cases that you want to. Use. So in some sites, like the, the, it depends a lot on the problem that you want to solve and the people that are working on this. But I would focus more on the problem rather than the people because the people need to be right. flexible, need to be able to learn. So speed, um, the intellectual property that you want to do. Um, because tools, if you do use tools or something, it's, it's because you are delegating outside. So it's something that is not core in what you do. So it's like it becomes more of a commodity. Um, and then the way you want to integrate, you want to keep it for your business. You want to integrate in a, in a, in a, in a you know, partnership with others. With the business. I think that, again, beautifully said. Um, so I think one thing that that I, I um, as as a follow on question on based on so you said um, keeping the tool agnostic. I think beautifully said. Yes. So uh, what would what would you suggest in that area? So like uh, typically, I, and this is with the bigger teams. So they have like some, um, so they, they are sort of appreciated for using multiple tools for sa for sort of doing the same problem. So at least not not sort of saving themselves from being very tool dependent on situations. Because I, I think you pointed out it's about the problem and not that much around the people or the, or the tools. So uh, what would you suggest uh, would be a, uh, some, of the, some of the things that you do to keep yourself tool agnostic, uh, if at all? Um, open source, open source because open source you have a, a community that votes, and you have, then you have kind of majority voting on what what is what is what is used the most. Uh, however, is all the and all these that we that we're saying is keeps evolving. Yeah. So mm. it can be suggestions now, but it's it's more maybe in a few months or in one year or two years I would say something completely different. It just reminds me of how fast things are evolving. So we need to be mindful that don't. The, the even so the nature of what we do is even probabilistic. Uh, we're getting more into all these machine learning algorithms, and, and it's not just like this is the answer. No, with a high level of probability, we think that this is a better answer, this is a better action than doing that one. Okay, so and according to the patterns that we have found, so we need to be comfortable with the uncertainty and with the flexibility of doing, of doing things. And that reminds me of an anecdote. I uh, just, just, uh, just remember that uh, back in university, in engineering school, I had a teacher of chemistry. And he was telling us about all this um, quantum, uh, quantum chemistry and all the, all the electron stuff. And he was saying, I know that 80% of what I'm telling you is wrong. <laughs> because it, uh, because there will be more discoveries following through, but as of now, that's the best is known. <laughs> nice. That's the best nice. mankind knows, right? So just keep updating yourself. Wow, 
nice what a wisdom <laughs> definitely good one so uh, now let's come to the people side of 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 this situation so uh, data scientist um, chief analytics officer chief data officer uh, these are like couple of words that we hear a lot um, definitely love to have uh, your insights into to you what those three words me really mean chief data scientist chief uh, ao and chief data chief data officer yeah. That's, that's, that's something that has been it's been discussed a lot in the web as well in, in forums and in conferences and in web, about the naming um, and I don't think this they, we have a nomenclature and agreement on that and probably will never be because mm -hmm. into the things keep changing and you already have very differences in names for example I can see in our companies um, a director in the United Kingdom means very different from a director in the United States or in Australia. So uh, the, the the level itself is different, um, the, um, but if we take all that aside, what current understanding is uh, um, so analytics officer drives uh, it's more about the, the analysis uh, in general and also as I see the chief is the person that should be sitting in the board, uh, so specializing in selling and probably the the and, and extracting value from the data, the chief data officer. Probably, so probably someone that um, gets the data ready, uh, prepares the data, and, and makes sure that the data, is, data is right, and is well governed, uh, is safe, um, and it's uh, ready for the use of, uh, of the CAO. But again, that may be the very different as chief data officer, and the role themselves, the chief data officer for a bank, may have very different constraints that for a, for a startup, of course, mm -hmm. uh, they only on the regular on the regulation levels. Data scientists, chief data scientists are the ones who, who are really, according to my definition that we said, the ones that um, are the ones that solve, specialize in solving the problems, uh, so using data science to solve problems, leveraging data, uh, good technology, and applying to the uh, to the business case. And and then in, among themselves, they can report to each other. You can have the CDO reporting to CAO or even mm. vice versa. It depends on what is more important for the business and in which stage of development of the business we also have the time uh, time span some roles may may make the redundancy over time if you have a, a, um, a role that gradually evolves and then suddenly it's distributed across the different businesses and each of the different businesses has their analytics and the design sorted and they already have a community you don't need a central chief you can, you can you can do things across different different businesses. So also there are different stages of, of development. Also the CDO. Once they have a, a if the CDO is one of the, I was discussing uh, recently with a, a forum in CDOs and banks. If you have cert, uh, the governance of it sorted, hmm. um, and then you that role it kind of uh, and that's essentially what uh, what you do and making sure that they and the right process of that. It can be distributed amongst the business owners, and then you also have the figure of the chief technology officer. And in some businesses, huge role. In others, it more just like sits under the CIO, etc. So interesting. So in no, definitely. Sorry, in some there's no one size fits all. No, I think that that makes sense. And I, I think one thing that um, we hear a lot. Um, uh, at Analytics Week, a um, lot of our, our followers and, and members, so they they sort of ask us, hey, how do you I be a data scientist? So I have been sort of playing around with data. I have been taking some of the online course courses and on and what and what not. So how can sort of I trans sort of make my, my uh, effort it translates into a, a data scientist uh, kind of a role? So what would you suggest? Um, like a bunch of things that that people sort of that data scientist uh, represent that people can do. Um, to be called data scientist, uh, if if I can ask, and and I think it pretty much it, um, it keep it uh, a very sort of relatable to News Corp, right? So what would data scientist to News Corp mean, and what would these guys do? So it became they became uh, more relevant for a company like News Corp, if at all. Yeah. Okay. We we have a lot of businesses, also even if different businesses means different thing, but I take the general definition is data scientist solves problems, solves problems. Uh, that leverage the knowledge of data and use the right technology for that. And you have some sort of business context that you are uh, playing in 
and sometimes we have very strong expertise in the in the in the business uh, It's very difficult sometimes to have people that are very strong at all these three things, and that's why then we talk generally more about data science teams that uh, instead of data scientists. Um, Mm, this thing. In, so, when you're a, if you're a data scientist and you or you want to become even stronger as a, uh, or become a data scientist, understand where you are strong in these areas, where you come from, uh, where is your point of strength, and then build some knowledge on the others. Often, what we see is that uh, data scientists come from a very technical background, um, either in software or in mathematics, or combination of both. Then, what uh, what is lacking is the art of storytelling, being able to communicate with the business. Um, so I always say it's like we need to play with our strengths. However, for the data scientists, um, I would say that it's very important to also build some soft skill strengths. And if you are starting at the beginning and you have all these courageous, know your strengths, but know your strengths in hard skills and also in soft skills. And then build some soft skills further, but some have what are you what are you strong at? It doesn't need to be that you're very good at selling. Maybe you're very good at at just telling a story similar, but it's, it's, or maybe you're very, you're very passionate in communicating what you do and people really believe you by the way you communicate things. Um, or people just like you the way you are. Um, so know your soft uh, skill that would allow you, will, I mean, to your, your analysis at uh, all that you do, be applied, be understood and be applied to the business. Because un unless it's really applied to the business, the value is not there. The value is only when the value starts only when it's about the business. Right. No, I think interesting, definitely. Uh, and now I think, um, and again, thank you so much for the insights. Uh, I truly appreciate that. So now kind of slightly at, at a weird uh, corner of this interview. Uh, so we ask everyone, um, what, would be, what would be your um, sort of prediction of where the state of analytics is going, heading towards? So, be as wild as you can. Uh, what do you think? Where we are heading to, and what's the what sort of some of the things that uh, you will sort of uh, at least assume that you will see soon from from, from you your get, end. Would you give a price in exchange? If we, sure. <laughs> yeah. If we get it right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a betting system. I'm sure we can find the analyst. Then. <laughs> That's true. Um, we. Um, it is known that there is a scarcity of talent. Okay, so uh, companies will not. My view is that companies will not be able to have enough talent to solve all the problems in house. So that we see all the play that we see in Silicon Valley and even in other in other hubs uh, of the world to be able to get talent. So if you don't have talent in house, then you need to buy it elsewhere. So uh, my view is that is in more and more uh, buying uh, or borrowing solutions uh, from elsewhere. Um, however. Um, you need to keep the, the core, you need to keep to be able to understand those decisions uh, well and make sure that what you buy um, the, the, off the shelf or is something that you that you need to be able to operate. Okay, so let's mm -hmm. this kind of uh, of modular solutions in-house, an expert that understands what, what is needed and how to operate it and maybe there's a solution that is uh, from, from the outside because there's not going to be enough people to operate that. So uh, the emergence of platform solutions, we're starting to uh, if the big companies uh, that are the big tech companies starting sharing platforms, starting positioning them, not only in infrastructure but also now in terms of machine learning and solution there. And that's from from one side on the on the on the where the talent will be and how to change it. Then, in terms of the data explosion, um, this is just the beginning. Um, mm. When people talk about the Internet of Things. Uh, when we see the um, uh, all the uh, development from uh, from countries around the world, not just the United States, and there's going to be data everywhere, and they're going to start having uh, ethical issues that we need to manage uh, more and more. Uh, there has always been ethical issues, even when you I was everyone would remember that sometimes the first time you need to put your credit card number on the internet, you're thinking, oh, uh, is it really going to work? And <laughs> Uh, but the, the it's gonna the the data because we're gonna be measured uh, more and more. Now we already are to certain to a big extent, but we're gonna be measured. Everything that we do is gonna be measured. We're gonna have sensors all over, and our data is gonna have value. So I, I foresee there's gonna be 
I don't know how it's going to be called, but probably things called data banks. And we we mm -hmm. be able to trade our data and sell our data and only to people that demonstrate value to us. And for that, critical things are going to be trust. Uh, trust in the data thing. And it's going to be, uh, there's going to be a lot of room because the people are going to be ruthless. If uh, they either trust you or they don't. And we've seen that a lot in marketing. The marketing, um, uh, many marketing industries were well saying that uh, it's all about building trust, not just influencing the, the, the customers. They need to be more truthful. I've seen that in the last, in the last few decades, evolution. Um, but all these data banks and trust on the data. It's, it's, so it's, it's overall is super exciting. Um, it's, um, yeah, it's super exciting to, to live on these things, but at the same time, it's like, mm. Wow, what what is gonna happen? And, and, and um, yeah, I take it as a again as a opportunity. Uh, the white they want you and I and all the people that look, look at this that we are we are working this space is really thriving. But for 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 society, it is difficult to foresee uh, where where this will go. Recently, even Elon Musk was saying that uh, we're probably in a, we're probably in a simulation. Uh, right. So. Oh, yeah. it, it, it can, can touch the deep uh, roots of our beliefs of what we are and, and, and where we're going. Right. No, I think interesting. And and um, uh, since since you are from UK, and I think we have a tendency to blame everything on big data. So what do you think? Can we blame Brexit on big data? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, that's it's so. about, it's about, no, we can blame it in trust, uh, I would say. <laughs> uh, but it's, it's, it's very difficult to... Um, yeah, I'd rather not comment on the on the on the political, but it's like I would I would I wouldn't say it's big data, but it's like yeah, that's that. We could take it as an example of that, um, regardless of what we may think about it, um, that there is change. I we always the only constant is change. If I use the, the this topic, um, and we need to be ready for changes, and changes often are unexpected. Interesting, and and Eloy, uh, thank you so much. Uh, it was a ball chatting up with you. So definitely learned a lot. Uh, you shared some amazing insights and, and definitely I do appreciate your time and would love to have invite you over uh, in a couple of months to, to learn more on your journey and sort of to, to discuss more on sort of a couple of insights that you have gained um, and share with our, with our community. And, and thank you so much uh, for your time on this. Yeah. Thank you, Vishal, as well. I'm also looking forward to learning because I said maybe half of what I said is wrong or more. <laughs> <laughs> and it will get superseded. So I always, 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 looking, <laughs> always looking for further learning. And if you come by London, or maybe you're going to come by Boston, uh, let's go for a beer. Yes, uh, will do. So thank you so much. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I just, I just, uh. I just I thought I was sick of home, but actually I was homesick Never really knew that I would have to grow up so quick I'm so uncomfortable, don't know anybody here Just a couple dudes that I met once, that's it Then I go into the booth feeling nervous Got butterflies in my stomach like I'm so worthless Is the mic gone? I don't know how to work this Inside I'm breaking down, I hope I'm not up on a certain